Okay, okay we're back on with the Facebook, and good to have our congregation, good to have our visitors, good to have all of you with us here today. We're just thanking God for another blessing, right? And uh, still praying, and all of y'all that's come in knows that uh, uh, Jane's husband passed away, Mikey's dad, and visitation this evening is six, and funeral tomorrow five. Um, I'm honored that they're here in the church, ain't y'all? I'm honored. Kathy's still going through the battle over the loss of Gary. Uh, we are we are seeing a lot of sadness and a lot of times things coming uh, or has come. A lot of sickness and uh, I want you to keep praying. I'm hoping that Joanne can get to walking this week and, and uh, if she can get to walking while she'll be at church. So you pray the Lord to help in all of these needs, okay? Good to have all of our young people. Good to have all of our elders and I believe we got enough to come up and sing. If y'all would like to, would you come? And uh, may the Lord bless you. Raymond, you want to sing in the choir? Huh? Steve, you want to sing in the choir? Steve said he wasn't singing, Raymond. And they say God don't answer prayer. What about that? Huh? Uh, anybody else? Lamar, you want to sing in the choir? You, there's always something wrong with your throat, Dan. It's, it's amazing there's something wrong with your throat, but that mouth keeps working. Huh? Uh, Joe, I know you don't. I'll sing right here.
words I got typed as assignment. Now, I ain't just ain't gonna be singing out no victory song. We're the ones that's got the victory. Uh, and I'm so thankful for that that we do have victory in Jesus and Him alone. Uh, why don't we go to page, uh, I think it's 89. It's 88. 88. Uh, What's scary is we find the watch sometimes. I'm getting worried. I'm not going to go see somebody grab me. Let's try it by the uh, EDA. It's roughly flat. <laughs> Oh, oh, oh. 
and he's going to lead you through. Uh, let's get page 13 for our last one. It might be 12. I think it's 12, actually. When we get there. Yep. No, we uh, Let's do it without the PSD flag and see what happens. Slow it down. <laughs> Okay. 
right over here where everybody can see me. How much you love me today? Oh boy. That, that is a bunch. I feel so blessed. I'm going to help you do your song, okay?
young man Paula naked. <laughs> All right. Yeah, Paula naked. asked us to do this song on the uh, broadcast this morning and I didn't get it where she was asking so I said I'd try to do it on the uh, uh, on this morning AM service there is one I just said I thought it was in that book y'all can help me with it if y'all want to when I sing it because y'all probably do a better job at it than I will Mr. Davis, and if, if Clyde by chance is getting to watch this, I don't know if he gets to watch online at all, but this is one of Ernie's favorite songs. But I come to the garden alone.
big man. That you? I'm not Amen. I sure don't want to deny my God. You? It says, see, these are old songs that I, I pulled out this morning. And, uh, they said, they're not my handwriting because they're legible. <laughs> Amen. Uh, we used to carry these books around everywhere. And uh, well, maybe I can get it started. If I can't, I will start up in something else. But, uh, well, I ain't going to do it there. Maybe D. I get there before you.
says, after this, Joseph of Arimathea, being a disciple of Jesus, but secretly for the fear of the Jews, besought Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus. And Pilate gave him leave. He came therefore and took the body of Jesus. And there came also Nicodemus, which at first came to Jesus by night, and brought a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about a hundred pound weight. And they took, then took they the body of Jesus and wound it in linen clothes with the spices after the manner of the Jews is to bury. Now in the place where he was crucified, there was a garden. And in the garden, a new, a, a new sepulcher wherein was never man yet laid. There they laid Jesus, therefore, because of the Jews' preparation day. For the sepulcher was nigh at hand. Let us pray. Father, I thank you that you gave us this day. And Lord, our heart is burdened today for the, the sorrow and the sadness of, of these today for their loss. And God, our heart is touched by the pain and heartaches that's out there today from the troubles that life has brought forth. 
And God, I'm praying today that you visit these that are suffering and that your hand might be put upon their bodies and they might feel the mighty touch of you, O Lord. God, we believe you're the great physician and that all things are possible through you. A lot of things in life, God, we don't understand. But there's one thing we know, that you are God. You always have been and you always will be. And that, God, your, your ways are not our ways and your thoughts are certainly not our thoughts. So into your hands we command these things today and uh, we thank you for this opportunity. I don't know a single heart, but God, you sent the thought. Use it now for your honor and your glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I don't know how, how fast we'll preach this. I said that this morning on the broadcast, and I think I preached an hour message in 15 minutes. But I want to talk to you about great clothes. Now, I want you to listen to this today. At this time here, as we are in our scriptures, that Jesus had already commended his spirit into the Father's hand. He had given his body over to the power of death, and I've told you that before, that death didn't take the body or didn't take the life of Jesus. Jesus gave his life. Now, there was no power there that could take the life of Jesus. Jesus commended his spirit into the hand of the Father. But I want you to know there was no life in him as he continued to hang there on the cross. His spirit was gone. And Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus took the body and prepared it in a way that the Jews prepare the body for burial. And the Bible says they wrapped him in linen. That's long strips of linen. And they put a napkin over his face. And these were the traditional grave clothes. And then they laid him in that tomb that was in the garden. These things, friend of mine, would suffice the dead. That's what they were meant to do. They were good enough for the dead. But I thought about if you'll just read on over to the next chapter, then you'll find that these things were left behind because Jesus was no longer dead, but he was resurrected from the grave. Isn't it amazing how he didn't take anything that pertaining to death, did he? The only thing in the tomb that was left was the grave clothes and the blood stains that were on those grave clothes. But he didn't need them. Because he was alive. And that's what I'm, I'm going to lay the foundation for. And in John chapter 11, as Jesus cried out with a loud voice for Lazarus to come forward, and he had been dead for four days. I told you, four days, friend of mine, the, the Jews believed that uh, up to three days that a person could get up on their own and still be alive. So Lazarus was dead four days. And after four days, Jesus called for him to come forward. The Bible tells us that Lazarus came forth bound hand and foot with great clothes and his face was bound with a napkin. That's John, a friend of mine, uh, John 11 and 44. And Jesus told him to loose him and let him go. Why? He didn't need the grave clothes any longer because he was no longer dead. Amen. Isn't that amazing? Isn't it amazing the, the transition that takes place from life to death? It's amazing the things that we don't need anymore. When death comes. But I, 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 the Lord began to speak to me about these grave clothes. And I, I want to uh, look at them in a spiritual manner. Now whether we want to believe it or not. Our world is vexed with people that are spiritually all dressed up in grave clothes. We are vexed with churches today that uh, are blanketed with grave clothes. The life is, is going out of them. The devil is sucking the very life out of the church. He's sucking the very... And the way he does that is how you and I allow him access to our lives. Amen. Are you listening? Amen. I want you to look at these things on a spiritual way today. How many are bound by spiritual grave clothes? You know, the evidence is found in... The, the deadness in their life to serve God. Oh, it's easy to serve God if we can make it down to the church. Our, our servant, a friend of mine, uh, go, is outside the doors. We worship in here. We serve God on the outside of those doors. Amen. 
Uh, are we in, are we a different Christian, so called, in here than we are out there? If we are, we're a hypocrite in one place or the other. Are, are you? Am I right? I, I, and I want us to look at these things today. Somebody said, well, you're using that word, and that's a bad word. The Lord used it. Amen. The only person that gets mad when you preach on hypocrites is a hypocrite. Amen. The only person that gets mad when you preach on any kind of sin is that one that's doing it in their life. Amen. Right? Amen. The evidence of, uh, of the deadness in the service of the Lord. <laughs> Have you noticed the trend of modern day worship? Amen. For uh, for many, they're they're like that old Brill Cream commercial. You younger folks won't remember Brill Cream. Brill Cream had a commercial about a little dab of doogie. I preached on Brill Cream Christians before because we we are vexed with a day with with many a Brill Cream Christian. It just don't take much to satisfy the average Christian anymore. Do you know that? Amen. Come to church, they sing a, a song or two and, and and pray that the preacher don't preach much past twelve o'clock. The altar is forsaken. They treat them like rattlesnakes. We have no joy. We have no emotion. We carry no burden for the lost. We have no vision. We're wearing those gray clothes. Real cream. A little dab of do you. Amen. God help me not get on Porter Wagner's black draft. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> well, I'll say off of that. All right. Thank you, Wayne. Amen. All right. Think about people are prone to not not much emotion at all. People don't want to be stirred anymore. Right? It's not just in one church. It's in all churches. We're living in a time when when people can't get stirred except they they get stirred by the emotion of someone else. We need a stirring from the innermost of our own being because God is in us. Amen. We shouldn't have to have somebody else to shout for us to shout. Somebody else to cry for us to shout. We should not need somebody else to get happy before we can get happy if God is in us like we say He is. Right? People are not are prone to not much emotion. They won't yield themselves for vessels willing to be used in the service of the Lord. Now, how often how does people come into the house of God and say, Lord, whatever you want me to do, I'll do it? Amen. Huh? We've already got a recipe uh, written out before we get here. Amen. If if Wayne looks at me wrong, I'm I'm going to tell him off. Amen. Amen. You ain't looked at me wrong, have you? Not yet. <laughs> you better hang on that because you're going to need a lifesaver. <laughs> Amen. Boy, didn't that work out good? Yeah. <laughs> All right, boy, I got you one too. You want them silent ones. Amen. You see, Sonia, she reached over and said, Give it to me, let him get you. <laughs> we don't want to, do we? Amen. We're living in this modern worship age. You know, people want the title of Christian without the responsibilities of being a Christian. Amen. There's responsibilities. Of being a Christian today. I, I seen a sign one time said the most effective Christian vitamin is B1. Amen. B1. You know, you and I were dead in our trespasses and sins before we accepted Jesus as our Lord and Savior. We were dead. Amen. We were consumed by those things. When we got saved, the, the old man died and we became a new creature in Christ Jesus. And in all reality, once we're saved, the grave clothes spiritually should have been cast aside and the new life should take precedent in our life. We should not be living like the old person we was. I don't believe you can be saved and still live like you once lived. If there's not a change, if there's not a new character, if there's not a new attitude, if there's not a greater love, if you don't see things differently, how in God's name can 
and you say you've been saved and pull from the flames of hell and give an everlasting life if there's no Christ like this in you here today. Amen. Huh? Amen. The grave clothes spiritually should have been cast aside. We have died to sin and we took on everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. I realize there's times, friend of mine, that we all get down. I realize that the pressures of life and our problems are sometimes overwhelming. We all have them. And oftentimes we have to take two steps backwards to take one step forward. I understand that. But you and I got to remember, friend of mine, that we are sons of God. We done moved up. From, from serving the devil, we, we were sons of the devil. We served the devil. We served the world. Well, but God has saved us. He has cleansed us. He has sealed us. He lives in us. Therefore, we are the sons of God. In, in our worst time, we're still the son of God. Amen. In our darkest battle, our hardest trial, we are still sons of God. That means, friend of mine, we're never alone. That means that I'm the throne room of glory, I'm that the doorway is always open, and when we pray, He will listen. And when He hears us, He will respond according to our faith. All we've got to do is pray and believe and trust. We are sons of God, you're to tell the devil, I'm a son of God. Amen. Amen. Won't that make him mad? Listen, <laughs> we gotta remember these things. We've been quickened. That means made alive. We've been quickened by the power of the blood. Amen. I, I'm glad I can proclaim salvation through the blood. Are you listening to me? It wasn't beating me. It wasn't shucking me. Amen. I, I, they didn't make get me wet enough. You can't get this old big boy wet enough to save me. Amen. Are you listening? The blood of Jesus Christ is what cleansed my sin. There is power in the blood and in the blood only. Amen. There is no other way that a person can get their sin washed away except through the power of the blood of the Lamb of God that was shed on a cruel tree. Can you say amen? No other way today. Amen. I thought about this. Friend, to be found spiritually dead is to try to live under the in the shadow of the old. Amen. People today are trying to, to go back. Why? I believe if you ever had anything that's real, you'd want to hang on to it. Amen. Wouldn't you? Amen. You give me a, a, a real five dollar bill, I'm not gonna give it to you back to you for play doh money. Right? Amen. When when the Lord came into my life, He He gave me something real. He He did a real work in my heart. There's nothing the devil's got that is worth giving up what God has given me. Or God has promised me. I don't want to be found living in the shadows of the old. You know, I find myself realizing there's absolutely nothing worth turning back to. Amen. Amen. My whole life had nothing worth, friend of mine, to offer in comparison to my new life in Jesus. Amen. You ever wondered people that some of our people help testify the deliverance of alcohol and they got saved, but you ever wonder what in God's name kept you hugging the toilet ever, ever uh, Sunday morning because of you got so loaded on Saturday night. Let me tell you something, I've spent some time at the foot of that toilet because I was sick. I didn't like it. And I sure didn't want no habit of it. But you see, the devil has all that power because you gave it to him. And, and he was dominating your life. Amen. Even though he has puke. Boy, don't, this is dinner time. He puke in your gut sound. Amen. You just would not surrender. Ain't that right? Amen. Amen. Somebody said if you drank enough, it tastes better. 
I don't care if it slits, falls, scalp, bud, wider, or whatever. Every time I smell the can of that stuff open, it smelled just like that old mule, the south end, and I was going to drive her north when she said to squat. Amen. Really, preacher? Really did? Every time I was, every time somebody said, I thought, my God, I'm plowing again. <laughs> Amen. They say it tastes better. I doubt that. I think you just taste buds just get numb. Amen. Amen. Somebody said, well, you lose your senses. Well, some of y'all got drunk quick, didn't you? Huh? Amen. Sin has dominated. I, I just use that alcohol. Now, there's so many addictions. There's so much as sin has. And, hey man, uh, uh, you know, uh, you say, well, alcohol is bad. It ain't no worse than gossiping. Amen. Uh, I'll have you to know I ain't gossiping. I'm just curious about what's going on. <laughs> Well, leave my name out of it. Right? Amen. Before they got all this stuff, I don't know how the clouds stay up there. Everything goes up, they say, now in the cloud. I don't see how in the world they stay up there with all this gossip. Thing. Used to, friend of mine, the, the phone lines after church would be doing this. Because everybody was calling. Did you hear what that preacher said? And, and he looked right at me, you darn tooth, and I looked at you. Because you look so guilty. Did you hear what so is? Oh, I better get off of that. I, some of y'all be thinking I've been listening in on you, but I ain't. What I'm saying is, sin has a way of, of taking hold of your life. And the more you yield yourself, the, the more power it has over you today. Right? right. Amen. Mm. Spiritual grave clothes. I, I don't need them anymore. Do y'all? Amen. Amen. I've been called from uh, the old life that I was living in. Jesus has broke the chains that helped me tighten and my feathers fell off and, and He freed my soul from bondage. I've been released from sin's prison. Amen. Amen. Why would I want to spend any time back in that kind of life? Amen. I thought I was happy, Wayne, but it wasn't. It was superficial happiness. Yeah. Oh, I, I could find things that made me happy on the inside, outside, but I could never find nothing to bring me contentment on the inside till I found Never. Never. Amen. What a day when I got a job and I didn't have to pick up cocoa bottles to buy, buy a soda pop. Amen. Amen. Ten hours a day, two dollars an hour, and I thought I was the king of the hill. That's pretty good back then. That's been 50 years. Amen. 50 years. Went in on the winter time, it was dark, and I got off, it was dark. But I thought I had it made. I could give Mama $20 and you could fill up a trunk full of groceries for $20. Amen. Now and then, if you buy three packs of meat and walk up and you give them a $20, they look at you like if that's all you got, you put two of them back. <laughs> Amen. Ain't times changed. But there's one thing that ain't changed. That's sin. Amen. Sin. Inflation has skyrocketed. But the wages of sin remain the same. Amen. No matter who does it today. I want to live my life for Jesus in such a way that the grave clothes is nothing more than a reminder of who I once was. But who I will never be again because my sins are under the blood of Jesus. Just want my great clothes to remind me of who I was. I, I haven't forgotten, y'all. Uh, their people say they, they forgot. I have not forgotten the old life I lived. 
I don't want to venture back, but I hadn't forgotten it. You can't forget it because the devil keeps reminding you of it and tries to show you that there was some joy uh, back there that you had in that old life that you need to go back, my friend, and revive. But there was no joy in that old life. The great clothes I want to be a reminder only of who I once was. But I can look to who I am because Jesus has saved me. We ought to pray, Lord, let us always walk in the newness of life. Letting the world see Jesus in us. It's not God's will, and, uh, and friend, neither should it be yours or mine for us to walk around in spiritual gray clothes. God's people are supposed to be a happy people. Anybody can walk around and look like a friend of mine uh, uh, that you uh, eat a, a green persimmon. I ain't going to ask y'all how many of y'all know what a persimmon is because when I asked y'all if y'all know G from Ha, I, I was shocked nobody did. So I ain't even going to ask you what a green persimmon. I wonder, but I would ask you, let me just venture out. Has anybody ever bit down on a green persimmon? I ain't had. Wow. Oh, yeah. Were they good? No. <laughs> <laughs> Sister Mildred Hagwood was going to make me and Louie a persimmon pie. Boy, I, my mouth was watered for a persimmon pie. But uh, the horses eat them so fast when they fell on the ground, we didn't get none. Amen. You say, well, I, I've never tasted one. Well, wait. Well, you can taste one now. It's frosted. Amen. But as a kid, we always heard of all this stuff. You know, uh, they talked about sassafras tea. Y'all ever, you elders ever drank sassafras tea? Somebody said it tastes like Dr. Pepper. I don't know where you got yours from, but the, well, ours didn't taste like that. Nobody told us that you're just supposed to use one or two roots. Me and Gary dug up a, a double handful and Mama bought it all. I, you could have made 20 gallons out of that gallon she made. <laughs> Go skin a sweet gum tree and, and the sap will taste like chewing gum. I, it must have been diet chewing gum because it didn't taste like nothing I ever did. Huh? Amen. So much. Sometimes I think, Wayne, they just told us that stuff to see if we was dumb enough to go do it. And we was. Amen. Amen. Jump out of a barn loft just when thinking we could fly. Made her own wings. I'd go a little further than I did. The, the first time I told Gary, I said, I think I flew a little bit. I just jumped harder. <laughs> Wasn't we? Didn't we do crazy stuff? We'd pull down a tree and a little tree and, and we'd hold it and one get on it and wrap their arm around it and their legs and let it go. <laughs> It's a wonder we ain't all died. Amen. But let's get back to this sin. I'm going to close. I'm not going to get to preach all this message. I thought about the grave clothes in our church. In churches. We're, we're, we're the body of Christ. And, and it's more than just a name on the building. When we open the doors of that, this building, it's our responsibility to make this a holy place. Amen. Are you listening? And the only way for it to be a holy place is for you and I to be living righteous lives. God's not in this place unless we bring Him. He lives in us. God doesn't live in the sheet rocker. He doesn't dwell in the pews. He's not standing behind that pulpit. All of this is man-made. But He lives inside of your heart and mind. And when we bring Him into this place by the life we're living, we can make it a holy place. And it should be. should be a place where people are not ashamed to worship God. Amen. A lot of places would condemn you for clapping for a singing, much less a preacher. Amen. You know, I'll say to them people, don't y'all? Amen. Preacher, some of these preachers think, bless God, you're supposed to look at them like they're, they're God's handyman. 
I'm just God's servant. I ain't his handyman. Amen. I'm just here to preach what God wants me to preach. I'm not here to be seen. If I was, I'd have wore a different pair of breeches. <laughs> but why didn't you wear a different pair of breeches? Had too much to do when I got home this morning. Amen. Amen. I just have an hour. From the time we get off from this uh, broadcast to get home and make sure that uh, 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 I can get something done and get these things done and, and get ready and get back down here before Sunday school. Amen. And somebody said, well, I wish you'd wore a different breakfast. Well, I wish you'd shut up. Amen. <laughs> Yours don't look the best. <laughs> I hope Littland didn't see that. <laughs> Amen. You know, I'm going to tell you something. Jesus condemned the Pharisees and the scribes, and he used several examples. But one example he used was he told them about their septicers, whited septicers. What they would do, they would whitewash the outside of these graves, these septicers, to make them uh, more appear, appear to be different what they are. More attractive, let me say. But Jesus said you do all of that to the outside. But inside there's dead man's bones and uncleanliness. It don't matter what I do on the outside, I can't change what's on the inside. But I can change what's on the inside and it'll rework what's on the outside. Jesus called them hypocrites. They were practicing hypocrisy. They were doing all these things to be seen. Oh, ain't you glad none of us here are here to be seen? If I did, I wouldn't mess up my hair. I'm not here to be seen to the world. I'm here to please God. I'm here that our spirits can bear witness one with another. I'm not here to be seen with you for who you are or what you look like. I'm here to be with you because our spirits bear witness together that we are Christians. Amen. That we love the same God. Amen. That I can call you brother or I can call you sister and you can me today. Somebody say, well, I'm ashamed to call you. Well, I still love you. Oh, I don't love you as much today. You'll grow up. There are some days I don't love you as much as I love you today. Amen. But I still love you. Amen. That's the way God works in our lives. Right? we got to love one another. The Bible says if we love God, we will love one another. Amen. If you're here today and nobody didn't shake your hand... How many hands did you sh did you even try to shake? Ain't you somebody to parade in the back door and say, "Hey, but I did to come shake my hand, blessed up." But well, I tell you, I ain't even gonna do it. Huh? You ever see churches get so upset people in the church because the pastor don't shake everybody's hand? Wouldn't it make more sense uh, if everyone just made one trip and shook my hand instead of me making fifteen trips to shake yours? It is your legs, not as long as mine. Somebody said mine ain't. Well, they, they face them at the same place. Our attitude. We got a good attitude here this morning. Our attitude one toward another is what makes everything okay. You know, I feel in my heart that you're here because you want to be. I feel in my heart today that you're here because you love the Lord. I know I'm not going to get to preach all of this. But we don't need to appear like quieted septicers, do we? We don't need to be hypocrites. Jesus told them they spent all that time uh, uh, trying to wash the outside of, of a vessel. And he said if you just wash the inside, the outside would be clean. Would be clean. They they make big embroideries uh, around their robes where they could be seen. They made long prayers in the marketplace. 
where they could be heard. They loved the worship or the praise of man more than they had any desire to worship God. God help us never fall into that rut. Grave clothes, spiritual grave clothes. Let me tell you something. If the devil can get you falling away from God, He'll take you to his closet of grave clothes and he'll let you try on everything he's got. He'll dress you up any way you want to be dressed in the spiritual grave clothes as long as you keep dying and not doing anything for God. How many times has the devil carried you to his closet? How many times has the devil said you can have this, you can have that, but you got to give up this? You know, sometimes some of those offers made us stop and glance in that direction. Had it not been for God in our life, we'd have been on the wrong path. Right? Sometimes temptations is temptations. <laughs> Are you listening? Amen. The devil doesn't come, friend of mine, with a hook that ain't baited with what he knows you're, you're wanting. Amen. He studies us. He knows our weaknesses today. And when he baits his hook, he always puts on the right bait. You see, what didn't work yesterday, he's tried something else today. And he'll keep changing his bait till he finds exactly your weakness. Amen. The weakness. Have you ever noticed sometimes it don't take nothing to push your buttons? Well, how do you think that happened? The devil knows what it's going to take to push your buttons. Have you ever found sometimes that you can get mad at a drop of the hat and drop your own hat to do it? Why? Because the devil knows. The devil knows. There's people that got mad in church said somebody was looking at them. They wasn't looking at you. They were looking at that bird out yonder. <laughs> it ain't your fault that a turkey got in the line of the fight. Sin. Do you need to strip off any spiritual grave clothes today? Come on, Joseph. There's a ton of stuff to preach on. Do you need to strip off any spiritual grave clothes? Is there anything in your life that is dying that needs to be revived as pertaining to the life you're living for the Lord? Have you lost your zeal? Is your testimony still a fiery testimony. Do you still get excited when you tell somebody about Jesus? Can you still see how far God has brought you out of the horrible pit and the miry clay and set your feet upon the rock and establish you going and put a brand new song in your mouth? Do you still see all of that in your life? Sometimes we sit on these pews like a knot on the log. When we should be praying for the lost. We should be praying for the sick. We should be praying for one another. But we just can't seem to get impressed to pray unless it's our problem. Woo! So we sit on our pew like a nut on a log. And wonder why God is not inundating us with His power. And his goodness. We say no when God says yes. We say I can't, I can't. God's never asked us to do anything we couldn't do. He never sees you anywhere that you can't get. If God's doing it. There's a lot of people that's fell flat on their face. They said God told them to do something that God wasn't in. Amen. If God is in it, it'll work. Not one time, but every time. What's in your life today? Go ahead, play with your bow your head. Spiritual grave clothes. Have you been fitted with any lately? How long has it been since you hadn't asked God for nothing but you just thank God for everything? How long has it been since you actually opened up your heart in prayer to the Lord?
that you pray for the sick. Pray for the lost. I'm not, I'm talking about somebody other than your own family. How long's it been? How long's it been since you asked God to help you bear somebody's burden? Because you've been where they are and you know how they feel. I'm going to ask you today, hinder you from talking to Jesus. What does hinder you here this morning? Well, if somebody would just go first, they're thinking the same thing about you.
uh, a guy that I know for years passed away. His name was Billy Ellison. He, Bill Ellison used to play and go out to Joe's Aint and play and uh, been, playing, been around him many times playing. And uh, but he's going on to be with the Lord. And so we pray for that family. And remember the family of Norma Woody. Uh, her husband's name is Charles. And uh, she's, they had her funeral yesterday. So uh, uh, pray for Charles. And pray the Lord will touch. Uh, and uh, Randall Russ, Deborah, I'm going to Oh, did they live over in uh, uh, Kensington? Oh, oh, okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, I, I should know her. I should know her. All right, is there anything else we're fixing to say goodbye to our Facebook crowd? We appreciate them. Let them know you appreciate them. Right now.